Hi, I'm Chad, and you're watching Square Body Stuff. What's going on, everybody? We are still working on our 339 stroker project. I've got all the rods, pistons, and everything that goes with those assemblies uh, laid out on the table. These are clean. I need to blow them off, dry them off, and everything. I've still got a couple more that I need to clean up. But I thought I'd show you how I clean them real quick. Uh, at least maybe go through one set. Uh, maybe boring for somebody, but... There might be that one person that, you know, wants to know the best way to clean stuff. So I'm going to show it. Uh, feel free to fast forward through if you don't want to watch that part. Uh, but before I started the cleaning process, I still had a couple more things to do with these pistons. Before I done any cleaning on them, I done another final inspection on these pistons. Make sure there wasn't anything that I didn't like about them. I also took some 600 grit emery cloth, or sandpaper, whatever you want to call it. And just softened up these edges around the valve reliefs and and around the bottom of the skirt. Uh, wasn't 100% necessary. They were fine the way they were. It wasn't like they had big burrs on them or anything. Uh, it was just a personal preference to kind of soften those edges up. Just so I don't, you know, have any really, really sharp edges. or It's just one less spot for a hot spot to happen on your crown or the top of your piston. And one last thing, you know, if, if there was a little bit of a burr there, it just it just softens everything up. The other thing I re realized is I forgot to show everybody when I done the file fitting the rings, the other step that you need to do whenever you're fitting your rings, make sure that they're uh, coming out right. And that would be your ring side clearance. Now I'll show you real quick what the ring side clearance is and how to check it. All that your ring side clearance is is how much clearance you have in between your ring and your ring land. How much of a space you got in there. And the way I check them is instead of trying to put the rings on the pistons and anything like that, I just put a ring in there backwards and use a feeler gauge, slide it in there, and uh, whatever it comes out to be is what your piston side clearance is. Now you need to do this for all three ring lands, your top ring, your second ring, uh, and for the oil ring package or the scraper package, whatever you want to call it, uh, I do assemble that in the piston the way it's supposed to be. That's the easiest way to check that. It's hard to put all this together without it being on the piston. You'll notice this ring pack has got an extra, extra ring in it. It's not just the three pieces. It's got this fourth one. And what this is, is just a spacer or shim, whatever you want to call it to uh, go on first and it bridges the gap between uh, where this uh, wrist pin boss goes through the piston if you don't have that that ring these real thin rings can scoot up and down inside there so you got to have this to just bridge that gap now let me get these last two sets of rods and pistons and everything cleaned up real quick and then we'll stage everything up to start putting these rods and pistons together uh, with the little clips and everything it's a it's another long process but that's part of the engine building
Now we're moving on to the next step of this adventure. Installing these little guys. Now what these are, are the keepers that hold the wrist pin in for a floating pin setup. Here's another style that I don't particularly care for. Um, not that they won't work, but they uh, uh, they're just less. They're more likely to possibly collapse and pop pop out. Even though there is two per side, the same with the spiral locks. There's two per side. Uh, but these are just a more more of a positive setup. I I really like using these better because if these ever lose spring tension or anything happens, these can actually come out and cause some issues. Now the spiral locks are not a fun process especially when you have fat little sausages like this. The big block ones are a little easier because my fat little fingers can fit in there better, but uh, if I could do this, uh, pretty much about anybody can do this, unless you have like really huge fingers. Now the best setup is to have a connecting rod vise or a good sort of vise to clamp your piston in. It's not gonna hurt it. Now I don't have a good connecting rod vise. That is uh, on my bucket list of tools to get. Uh, for right now, I just set it in my vise over there, and you have to excuse the mess. Everything's still a mess around here. Um, but I just clamp it in my vise. My vise has plastic or UHMW inserts in them, and I've got a towel and like a hand towel and some shop rags around it to keep it protected, clean, and all that stuff because all this stuff is good and clean right now. Uh, so. You got to make sure you protect your pistons from getting marred up. Now you can, and I have, just done them on the bench, put a towel down, something soft, and just kind of mess around with them and roll them around and get the clips in there by hand without putting them in a vise. Sometimes it can be a little bit easier because you can move the piston around, but it's a lot easier if you can have that piston, you know, secured in a vise where you can have both hands to work on it. Now as much of a pain in the butt they are to install uh, it's just another part of the process um, I'd rather spend the extra time to put these guys in than to possibly have a failure with these guys um, you know it's, it's one of those things just kick back put some music on enjoy the process try not to get frustrated if you get frustrated step away from it that's my biggest um, I guess help that I could give you is you know if you start getting frustrated with it step away there's a possibility you could start bleeding up points because you're going to be possibly poking your finger with a little screwdriver or pick, whatever you use. Yeah, but with that said, what's harder than actually putting these things in is trying to figure out a way I can film it without getting these fat little things in your way and you can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm going to do my best to set you up to where you can actually see what I'm doing and I can try to explain how I do it and... Uh, Hope it makes sense. Now, just let's hope, hope for the best. Hope you guys get it. And normally what I do is, you know, my process is I, I put all the spiral locks in one side of the piston. It doesn't really matter which side you start from. I just go through, put them in all the pistons on one side, leave the other side open. Uh, that way you're ready to just go through and put your pins in, lube everything up, put your pins in, and then get set up to put all the spiral locks on the other side. And you need to find a small screwdriver or pick, whatever you feel comfortable working with. I, I like to use a small screwdriver um, and a lot of patience. Find that too. And I tried to try to stagger them to where the opening is on one side on the first set. And then on the other set, I'll stagger it this way. About the easiest thing I found to get it kind of stuck on your finger like that so you can get it down in that groove. And that could be about the easiest part of this whole process. And then I switch fingers and start working it down in there. But as you're working it around, you want to try to pull the opposite side away from this direction that direction or the opposite side you're working in and just kind of work your way around 
And in some ways, I hope this one goes easy to show you the easy way to do it. And in some ways, I wouldn't mind if it fought me a little bit so you can kind of, you know, see what you're up against. Alright, and if you notice, this little tab is above that, which yours may be a little bit different. Uh... I got to keep on these, I got to keep this above that tab there. I'll just call it a tab for this video. Because I got to pull that into that, that direction to get this side going down in there. And once you get going, you want to listen for that snap. That snap lets you know it pretty well seated in there real good. And I'll take my screwdriver and go ahead and push it all the way the rest of the way, or all the way the rest of the way in there. And get ready to install the next one. And this may be a little challenging because the camera's actually, and the tripod is actually in my way for me to get on this other side to do the opposite. I'll make do. I always do. Gotta be patient. And sometimes they'll pop back out and fight you, but... Okay. Now they're both installed, and you can also take, I usually take this screwdriver and just kind of run around in there, make sure it's expanded out all the way. That's all there is to it. Uh, honestly, those didn't fight me too awful bad. Uh, I've had a couple of them put up a pretty good fight. I just couldn't get the angle right, but once you get used to it, get the feel of it, uh, after the first two or three, it'll start going together a little bit easier. Just try to keep your fingers out of the way so you don't poke your fingers. Luckily, so far, I'm not bleeding yet. Uh, I've got a few of them done already. But i got a couple more to go. I'll get them all done on this side. And then we'll uh, start hanging some rods off of these things. Now we're going to take these three pieces and make them one. I'm going to go ahead and lube everything up. My assembly lube. On the pin. And go ahead and get it started. Now we've got these put together, we got to get these other spiral locks in. Now I'm going to back up just a second. Um, I realized I didn't explain to you about which direction you should put your rod in your piston. Because uh, there's a right, right, a right way and a wrong way. Now what I've done is went through and I've marked every piston with an arrow showing forward. That is the forward facing of when it's in the block. That way I know I don't have to kind of guess or anything. Don't be afraid to make marks on stuff to make it the job easier for you. I've also marked the forward spot on the top too. And they've got their numbers. I didn't write the number on that one, but they've got the numbers according to what cylinder they are. So everything's marked. It makes it less confusing for whenever I'm trying to put these things together. I've also got my rod marked with an arrow facing forward and to know which direction needs to be facing forward on my rod uh, these rods and a lot of your aftermarket rods will have a heavy chamfer 
and that will need to go to the outside edge of your crankshaft. This will be the crankshaft side, and this will be the connecting rod side. It'll match up with your other corresponding connecting rod. So on the even number ones, the chamfer will go to the rear. The odd ones, the chamfer will go towards the front. That way when they sit in your on your connecting rod journal and your crankshaft, they're made it up the way they need to be. And your tabs for your bearings will be facing in the up direction when they're in the block. Don't be afraid to mark everything to make it easier for you to go through and put it together. That way you're, it's kind of like measuring twice, cut once. I go through all these, double check before I mark them. And after I mark them, I check them again just to make sure I've got them marked correctly. That way I want to go to assemble. Uh, the assembly process goes a little bit faster. So now we got this rod and piston put together. I'm going to go ahead and get these spiral locks in. And it's pretty much the same process. You just have the uh, pin in there that's behind the, the spiral lock. So it can be a little more difficult getting it started because your finger can't get down to the groove. But just be patient. Work it around there and you'll get them all in. And this one's going to fight me a little bit. And that's alright. That ain't going nowhere. I'm gonna go through and finish up putting all these rods on these pistons. And I don't think I'll do a time lapse. I think I'm just gonna let you guys go uh, crank up some music, maybe have me a beverage, and enjoy this process. Uh, this could be time consuming and frustrating for sure, but it's one of those things I, I hope you guys enjoy doing as much as I do, and hopefully, what I'm showing you guys through these videos helps you enjoy the process more. Um, I've had a lot of good comments on my video so far, and I really appreciate that. We're going to cut this off. I appreciate you guys watching. Till next time, y'all keep your square bodies rolling, and we'll catch you later.